Hey, people of planet Earth. While you play Starfield, I'm still stuck here in Fallout 4 until tomorrow. So, I might as well take a look at a few revolver mods. I have them listed on screen right now. There's definitely some missing from here that I wanted to review, like the Colt Single Action Army from the Fallout 4 New Vegas team. But that mod went Discord only a few years ago, and I don't want to deal with that crap right now. Of the mods I actually bothered looking at, two really stood out above the pack. Select Revolver and the Hunting Revolver and Ranger Sequoia mod. I can easily recommend either of them, especially Select Revolver, which is basically flawless in every regard. The Hunting Revolver has some power armor problems and not as many attachments as I would like, but it's still a great weapon, and it's lore friendly too if you care about that. With recommendations out of the way, let's take a look at all of these mods in detail. First up, we've got the Colt Mothman 6520 and N80 Pistols Pack. It comes in two versions. You can either download the version with a lore-accurate Colt logo, or the version with a logo based on the lame-ass cryptid from Fallout 76. That's the easiest choice in the world. After downloading the Colt version, you'll find this mod adds two weapons like promised, the Colt 6520 and the N80 Pistol. There's no unique variants or pre-placed spawns, but both weapons are injected into leveled lists. Unfortunately, they've been injected into way too many lists, making them insanely common. Look in any pre-war suitcase and you'll find one. It's ridiculous. Deleting some of the properties in the injection quest might help, or you could delete the injection quest entirely and make your own manual edits. The weapon models look pretty good, but animations are not so great on either the 6520 or N80. Saying that firing and reloading looks stiff would be an understatement. But I do like the unique design of these weapons. It's not often you see a bolt-action pistol that still has a slide. There are custom third-person animations, but in third-person power armor, both weapons use deliverer animations and have this weird bug where they shoot twice, but only if you haven't fired for a little while. There's a cooldown during which you can shoot normally. It's... strange. I think balance is quite good for these weapons. They're roughly on par with the regular 10mm pistol. The 6520 does a lot of damage and has a similar fire rate to the vanilla 10mm, but it's hampered by its 8-round cylinder and slow reload time. The N80 does a bit more damage than a 10mm pistol, but doesn't have the capability to become fully automatic and has a very poor fire rate. When it comes to modifications, both weapons have a respectable amount of choices. The N80 has receivers, a light barrel, three grips, a bunch of magazines, reflex sights, muzzle devices including a suppressor, and some alternative skins. The 6520 has everything the N80 has, except for the suppressor and magazine options, which makes perfect sense since it's a revolver. Overall, I had more good than bad to say about this mod. If you don't mind the leveled list and animation issues, this is a pretty nice, lore-friendly weapon mod. Second, we've got a mod that I recommended, the Hunting Revolver and Ranger Sequoia. This mod has two versions, one that makes both weapons use Far Harbor's 4570 rounds, and another that makes the weapons use 44 Magnum. If you have Far Harbor, get the Far Harbor version. The Hunting Revolver is injected into leveled lists, but you'll only see it on bosses, legendary enemies, and at vendors, and only after level 20. You can also find a single pre-placed spawn on top of the tower at Lynn Woods. The Ranger Sequoia can only be found in Kellogg's house behind his bed. Maybe he stole it from an NCR Ranger, who knows. The Sequoia has a weird sorting issue in the inspect screen, but is fine in actual gameplay. These weapons look incredible and have some really excellent custom animations, in both first and third person too. My only criticism would be the firing sounds are just a bit too loud. I know these are powerful weapons, but it's just too much. In third person power armor, sadly both weapons have exploded parts and use 10mm pistol animations which don't look very good on a revolver. The balancing is pretty damn excellent though. These are 5 shot revolvers with a pretty bad fire rate, a long reload time, and hefty recoil, so of course they can dish out some great damage. These weapons are very bad in VATS though because of their high AP cost. I think when fighting one or two spongy enemies these weapons will shine, but against a horde of fast moving targets you'll want something else. The Sequoia has a slightly shorter reload and more damage than the Hunting Revolver, but unlike the Hunting Revolver it can't be modified. Speaking of modifications, the Hunting Revolver has receivers, three barrels, four grips, some sight options, a muzzle brake, and a suppressor. So there's not a whole lot of modification potential, but it's enough. In the end, this is a really great mod. It makes a perfect fit for any load order. 
Fallout 4 really needed more 4570 caliber guns to supplement the one that it has, and these revolvers are just the ticket. Third up, we've got MP412, a standalone revolver. Make sure to grab its update file, and if the regular 2K textures don't appeal to you, there are 1K, 4K, and even 8K texture options available. This weapon has no pre-placed spawns or uniques, but it does have leveled list injection, and much like the Colt 6520, it appears too commonly. It adds its own 44 shell and incendiary ammo types, and those are way too common too, appearing in most ammo boxes. Beyond that obvious problem, it's a good looking weapon. It has custom first person animations, but in third person it uses 44 pistol animations both in and out of power armor, which look okay. Unfortunately, it has the first person power armor double footsteps bug, and there is no patch available to fix it. It also has completely misaligned iron sights, which can make it hard to shoot at a distance. The weapon is also very overpowered, doing far more damage than our previous mods Ranger Sequoia, and that's before you factor in the overpowered incendiary and shotgun ammo conversions. It also has great range, a low action point cost, and it's double action so it fires reasonably fast. It's a weapon with no real downsides. As far as attachments go, all we get are receivers, barrels, damage cheats, and really overpowered incendiary and shotgun ammo conversions. It's pretty pathetic. I don't like this weapon at all, but its model was reused in another mod called Russian Assault Pack. I'll link it in the description, you should probably try that instead, I doubt it's any worse, but I've never tried it myself. Next up we've got the RSH-12 Assault Revolver. This weapon requires War Daddy's double action revolver reanimation, but there is an optional download that removes the requirement. The weapon has one unique, the Putinizer, which can be found at Federal Supply Cache 84 ne It does cryo damage. The base RSH-12 can be found on gunners, vendors, and as legendary drops. This weapon also uses its own ammo type, the 12.7mm Ash Round. There are munitions patches available to rechamber it in munitions 12.7mm if you'd prefer that. The model and texture work seems a little simplistic to me, but maybe that's how the real gun looks. The weapon uses War Daddy's double action 44 animations in first person, and vanilla 44 animations are used in third person. I don't believe the base version of the weapon is too overpowered. It's only a 5 shot weapon with hefty recoil and difficult to find ammo. The Putinizer variant on the other hand is incredibly overpowered because of its ability to freeze just about any enemy in a large radius. As for attachments, there's a great selection. We've got receivers, barrels, grips, laser sights, scopes, muzzle devices, flashlights, finishes, and the ability to switch to single action or automatic fire. I encountered a bug with the auto fire that let me shoot indefinitely, so it might be best to stick with single or double action. Ultimately, this is a pretty good weapon, especially if you're already using War Daddy's double action revolver reanimation and you need a 12.7mm gun for your munitions load order. Fifth, we've got Cobra, Officer's Revolver. This mod adds a single weapon, the Officer's Revolver. It has no uniques, but there's one pre-placed spawn at Listening Post Bravo in a safe. Unfortunately, this mod breaks pre-combines by deleting objects in the cell, so make sure PRP is loaded after this mod to avoid visual issues. Or even better, just delete this mod's cell records in Fallout 4 edit. Anyways, this weapon is injected into leveled lists, but can only be found on gunner bosses from level 25 onwards, so you won't be seeing it often. This weapon's model is okay, but the default textures look flat and monochromatic. I guess they're serviceable, and you can replace them with different camo patterns at a workbench. It uses vanilla 44 pistol animations, which look pretty bad, so War Daddy's 44 reanimation mod could make a great pairing with this one too. There's a decent number of attachments for this plasma revolver. There's receivers, an alternate barrel, a grip, three sights, reticles, damage cheats, legendary modifications, 14 different skins, and laser pointers. Pretty cool. I just realized I forgot about balance. This is a very damaging weapon, but it does fire slow moving plasma and has a slow single action fire rate, kind of justifying the high damage. I don't think the balance gets too bad unless you use the damage cheats or legendary effects. I thought this would be a terrible weapon because of its vanilla animations and minor spelling and grammar mistakes, but actually it's not so bad. Fallout 4 doesn't have enough plasma weapon mods, and while this revolver isn't the best you could download, there are worse choices. This is a very usable mod, just make sure to delete its cell edits. Sixth, we've got Chiapa Rhino Revolver. It comes as loose files. 
Low-end users should pack those up into an archive to prevent stuttering. There are no unique variants, but pre-placed spawns can be found at Trinity Tower, Gunrunners Plaza, and the Mass Fusion Building. It can also be found on Gunners, Vendors, and Bosses, starting from level 15. I like the weapon's model, but its animations are just the vanilla 44 pistols but modified to fire double action. When drawing the weapon, the shells or whatever clip right through the cylinder, which looks terrible. This is yet another weapon that benefits greatly from using War Daddy's animations because they seem to fix the clipping issues and look a hell of a lot better. The balancing is alright. Even though the damage is high considering the fire rate, you'll have a hard time controlling the recoil on this beast, and it weighs more than a regular 44 pistol. This revolver doesn't have that many mods. It's got receivers, three barrels, two grips, two sights, eight camos, a laser and blade attachment, and a wooden barrel you can't even really see. I don't have too much more to say about this one. It's not a bad weapon mod, but it doesn't do anything particularly interesting. Seventh up, we've got my other recommended mod, and the absolute best on this list, Select Revolver. It's ESL flagged and comes in at only 300 megabytes, which isn't too crazy for a weapon mod, but if that's still too much for you, the author has put out a light version at only 90 megabytes that lacks the texture customization options. That's also the version you get on Xbox, so it should fit within your load order quite easily. There are no unique variants of this weapon, and the only place you can acquire it is a ruined building in Hyde Park. There's a very cool animation the first time you pick it up, and once you do, it's added to legendary drop lists and you can craft more at a chem lab. This is a gorgeous looking weapon. The animations are quite good, albeit ridiculously exaggerated, unless you select the common handling option. This weapon has four different animation options, but the smartest one to choose would be double action with common handling, so you get the highest fire rate and shortest reload time. Amazingly, this weapon even has custom animations and third-person power armor, which is great. The Select Revolver is not overpowered because it has a four-shot capacity, high recoil, and a relatively long reload time, even with common handling selected. It also fires the relatively rare 50 cal rounds, so there's no need to worry about balance. There's a good number of attachments available for this puppy. Receivers, barrels, grips, scopes, logos, accent colors, and a lot of finishes. This is an excellent mod, definitely one of the best I've seen for Fallout 4. It's easy to recommend. Eighth, we've got the Schofield No. 2 Revolver. This mod comes as loose files, but that's the least of its problems. The base version of the Schofield is on vendors, bosses, and legendary enemies, starting from level 8, and there's one unique variant called Unlucky, which can be found inside Valentine's Detective Agency. This weapon has some pretty basic textures, a grating firing sound, and a broken mix of 44 pistol and flare gun animations. When firing in third person while standing still, you'll teleport to the left. In third person power armor, you won't get teleported, but you'll only be able to get off one shot before your arms are locked to your sides, permanently trapping you in a Naruto run until you change perspectives or sprint. Basically, this weapon is unusable in third person, and in VATS too, because VATS uses third person animations. Balancing isn't terrible. The Schofield does a lot less damage than the vanilla 44 pistol, but it does use the more common 45 caliber ammunition. If this gun wasn't a broken mess, it could make a good early game alternative to the 44 pistol, and I think that's what it's intended to be. There's not many attachments for the Schofield. Receivers, three barrels, grips, four scopes, and a silver finish is all you'll get. The Unlucky variant has a special ivory grip and a black finish. But even if this mod had a million awesome attachments, the fact that it's fundamentally broken makes it impossible for me to recommend. Ninth and finally is the Capital Wasteland 32 caliber pistol. This mod is ESL flagged, which is nice. It adds to Fallout 4 one of the crappiest guns from Fallout 3, the 32 pistol. There's no unique variants or pre-placed spawns of this weapon, but it does have leveled list injection. It's meant to be a low-level gun, so you'll only find it on raiders or at vendors. This mod also adds its own 32 caliber ammo, but there are munitions and caliber complex patches available, thankfully. I have to say, the Fallout 3 weapon has been faithfully recreated, and the custom animations are okay. Keyframes have been taken from both the 44 pistol and flare gun animations, with the end result being close enough to the quality of vanilla Fallout 4's animations. In third-person power armor, it uses 44 pistol animations, which look fine. The weapon is balanced very much on the weak side, which makes sense for an early game weapon. 
It has a 5-shot capacity, a long reload time, and pathetic damage even with an advanced receiver. It's also single action unlike its Fallout 3 counterpart, which makes it even more useless. It does have a low AP cost, so it could be okay for an early game VATS focus build, but before long you'll find something way better. There's also not that many attachments for this weapon, there's only receivers, barrels, three scopes, a suppressor, a conversion to 38 caliber ammo, and four tints. One advantage of this mod is it's really small, at only 27 megabytes on Xbox, which makes it easy to squeeze into any load order. And if you're looking for a weapon that makes use of munitions as 32 caliber ammo, this isn't a bad choice at all. Alright folks, that's all I have for today. I hope you learned about some weapons you weren't aware of before. My next video should be about Starfield as long as AMD gets around to giving me a Steam code. So, until then, toodles! <clears throat>